Hey there, church. Pastor Mike here. So good to be with you once again. Thank you for joining me for this midweek update. I hope that your day is going well. hope you're rejoicing um, because the Lord has allowed you to see another day and to experience another day, experience life on the earth that He created. And uh, I hope that um, you are appreciative uh, and grateful for every breath that our Lord gives us. And uh, I'm so grateful to be with you once again. Um, and uh, just, uh, just missed you guys this past Sunday. We were uh, out, of, out of town, but we had a, a great time. And I know uh, Pastor Joey did a wonderful job of preaching from uh, Matthew chapter 9. And uh, so grateful uh, for Pastor Joey and uh, for all of our staff. Have such a wonderful staff here and, and uh, so, so great to, uh, to work with, uh, to serve with. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm grateful, grateful for uh, uh, great uh, uh, men and women who help uh, uh, serve our church and serve our community. And, uh, but I'm glad to, to be back with you uh, today. I'll, I'm looking forward to being with you Sunday. I hope you're planning to be here uh, this Sunday, either at the 8.30 a.m. service or the 11 o'clock service. And I uh, hope that you plan to, to get plugged into Bible study um, at the 9.45 uh, uh, time slot. That's when we have our Sunday school. So um, continue to, to, uh, uh, to get plugged in, to be a part of that, to be a part of the community of God. It's so important for us uh, individually, collectively, to stay engaged with each other, uh, engaged in God's Word, and, and, and seeking to, to serve the Lord with gladness uh, and with thanksgiving uh, for the time that we have. We're just here for a brief time here on this planet. Uh, may we glorify God uh, while we're here. And, uh, and I encourage you to, uh, to be a part, not only of Sunday, but on Wednesday nights at 6.30, we have uh, our, our prayer time. We also have Bible study, and, uh, I, and we meet in the sanctuary. So I encourage you to be a part of that, um, even if it's been years since you've been, or maybe you've never been. Uh, we encourage you, we invite you to be a part of that. We have the youth that meets on Wednesday nights at 6.30 at the gym and the outlet. We have uh, our children that meet up on the second floor of the educational building at 6.30. Um, we have uh, a ladies' Bible study that's going on at 6.30. So I encourage you to be a part of that and, and uh, take advantage of the opportunities you have uh, to worship the Lord, to serve the Lord, to to grow in your understanding of His, His Word and your understanding of yourself. Um, and uh, so I encourage you to do that. Sunday, Sundays and Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, uh, you, you be here. You be obedient um, and be a part of what we're doing here at Whitefield. What I want to do over the next few moments is, is kind of look at a passage in Matthew and, and, and hopefully... Uh, help you uh, as you read God's Word to, to better understand it. Now, if you've gotten your 5x5x5 five by five by five New Testament reading plan, kind of looks like that, um, I have challenged our church to read through the New Testament in 2021. Um, and that is a very uh, uh, attainable goal. Um, that, is, that is not uh, strenuous uh, reading uh, whatsoever to read through the New Testament in a year's time. And I know some of you are already finished and some of you are staying right on schedule. And either way, you're reading the God, you're reading God's word. That makes me happy. Uh, and uh, and so, but on the front of that uh, five by five reading plan, uh, gives us some uh, some tips to really uh, five ways to dig deeper. Uh, one of the ways is to underline or highlight keywords or phrases in the particular passage. You could use a, a highlighter. You could use a pen. There's also also a thing called dry highlighters where they don't bleed through the next page because many times uh, uh, scripture uh, is, is printed on really thin uh, pages. And, and so uh, dry highlighters are a great option to, to highlight without it bleeding through. So you can underline or highlight keywords or phrases. Um, they encourage you to actually put it in your own words. Read the verse slowly, then rewrite each phrase or sentence using your own words. Now, that, that is a good practice, and I know why they're putting that in there, so you, should, you can be familiar with whatever uh, passage of Scripture that you're, you're reading. Uh, be careful uh, in that. We do not want to alter 
uh, scripture or alter the message of scripture. If you're writing it just to help you remember or capture the, the meaning of that particular text, that's perfectly fine. Um, they say, uh, thirdly, ask and answer questions. Uh, put questions to, uh, to the text, questions like, what does this text say about God? What does this text say about sin? Uh, what does this text say uh, about, uh, about me? Um, are, there, are there promises that I need to claim? Are there sins that I need to repent of? Are there commandments that, that I need to obey? Questions like that. Really put questions to the text. That way you, it deepens your understanding of what God is saying and what the author's original intent was. Um, they say, four, capture the big idea. Uh, God's word communicates big ideas. Periodically ask, what's the big idea in the sentence, paragraph, or chapter? And what is a good exercise for you to do is as you read a chapter, just try to summarize what that chapter, that the main point of that chapter is is talking about. Now that sometimes that's that's easier uh, to do than than other times. Some passages are, oh yeah, okay, this is what that that means, or here's what I'm thinking it it means. Um, and other times it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, and and so some some. Uh, uh, folks will say, you know, try to get it w- within a, a sentence. Describe that chapter, the point of that chapter, in a sentence. Some say use a paragraph to describe it. Some even say choose three words that would that would describe what this passage is is talking about or what this passage is is teaching. Any of those methods are great. It it helps us to understand the flow. Of, of the particular book, the flow of the passage, and it gets us engaging in God's Word and really putting questions to the text. And that is so vital and essential to our walk with the Lord uh, because He has given us His Word. He has revealed Himself to us. So uh, try to capture uh, the, the big idea in each passage. And then personalize the meaning. They say, number five, respond as God speaks to you through the Scriptures. Ask, how could my life be different today as I respond to what I am reading? That's the application part. Now, we can talk about meaning, and we need to talk about meaning. We need to understand what does the passage mean? What did it mean in the original context? When the, the, the human writer, inspired by God's Spirit, was writing... What did he intend to convey to the original audience? We need to understand what that, what the text means, what it originally means. And then from that, how does that apply to me in 2021? How, what is the truth of this passage and how should it shape my life? How should I submit to this and and how should this truth affect my life today? Because church, if you look for it, you will find it. If you are willing to submit to what God is pointing out in His Word for your particular life, if you're willing, God will show it to you. He will show you the truth that you need to hear. And sometimes it, it's, it stings. Sometimes the truth stings. It's, it's ooh, I can Mm, I did not see that in my life, but I see it now. I had a blind spot, but that blind spot's been removed graciously by God. And so, yes, truth stings, but truth also heals. Right? Truth stings, but it also heals. God doesn't just point out our, our faults. He also points us to the remedy. He points us to the the re, the relief the the uh, the rescue he points us to Jesus all Scripture is pointing to Jesus Old Testament New Testament it's pointing to to Jesus the 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 fact that that we can be made right before God that we can have the righteousness of God that that even if we fail we are still loved by the Father we can run to the Father. Passage after passage will will teach us that, will tell us that. That's why I'm I'm so 
thrilled that so many of you are reading God's Word because in it you will find truth. You will find life. You will find hope because it, the Scripture points to Jesus who is the fulfillment of the law who is the divine Son of God, the one who became poor so that we could be rich, rich in righteousness, rich in hope, rich in love, rich in grace because of Jesus. So as you're reading God's Word, don't just read it and put it away. Do the things that that we talked about today. Put those things into practice. And what you'll see and what you'll find is that God's Word is rich in in treasures to be be found, to be claimed, to be be gleaned for for every uh, follower of Christ. And those who who are maybe reading uh, in a skeptical way because they're not believers yet, they're reading and and, and wanting to find out what, what Christ is all about and what God is all about. Um, as, as, as they read, and our prayer is that as they read, they would see uh, the, the wondrous love uh, that God has for them and they would be, they would be gloriously saved. And, and, but Christian, as you and I read God's Word, as we put questions to it, as we highlight key phrases, as we, as we kind of walk through and, and, and capture God's big idea, it, it begins to... to to change us and shape us. And as we are obedient to what God reveals, our good works naturally flow out of our relationship with the Lord Jesus. And unbelievers see our good works. And they're stirred up. They're wondering, well, well, who is this God? Their their God must be really a great God for them to to do what they do, to to live how they live. And that's that's the main thrust of our lives is to glorify God, to to bring more people into the kingdom by pointing them to Jesus. Church, that is the the wonder in the the wealth of the Word of God. And so I pray that you are in it, that you are reading it. If you have issues, struggles, uh, understanding, there are helps out there, email me, Pastor Mike at whitefieldbc.com. I'll do what I can to help you understand it. Go to your concordance. If there's words in there you don't understand, go to your concordance and look uh, for, for places where it's used in other passages of Scripture. Uh, look for the definition there. Uh, get a dictionary out. Pull out your phone and, and look up uh, a, a word. And look at the, if you got a study Bible, look at the cross references there. Uh, that, that they give you so you can go and see where, where it's mentioned at other places in Scripture. Let Scripture interpret Scripture. Um, there's, a, there's a host of ways where you can better understand God's Word, in, but it's, the ball is in your court. It's how much do you want to put, how much effort do you want to put into understanding and reading God's Word. And I hope that's a lot. I hope there's a lot of effort you want to put into it uh, because you, can, you, you cannot plumb the depths of the, of the Word of God. There's always... Uh, uh, more that the Lord will give you and show you from His great Word. Church, I love you. It's been so good to be with you once again. Plan to be here Sunday. We'll be in Matthew chapter 5. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, God bless you. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Love you, church.